Hello everyone, good morning, afternoon and evening to everyone joining us today around the globe and thank you for making it to this exclusive webinar from Team Data Archiver. I assure you all that this webinar is going to be compact and informative. Hence, brace yourself. For your information, everyone has been muted and if you have any questions, please ask in the chat window. You can post your questions puppy, or you can text me on a separate chat window. We will try to get to every question in the seminar. We are recording today's webinar and we will share the link with you right afterwards. Alrighty then, let me get started by introducing myself. My name is Sandeep Chetri and I'm a customer success manager. I work closely with a lot of people who have their businesses on Salesforce platform and I turn their success stories into mine. I'm so excited to be joined with Dr. Kumar, who is our Chief Technology Officer for Team Data Archiver. Nanda is our driving force who makes things possible and turns challenges into possibilities. On that note, Nanda, could we hear you speak, please? Thanks, Sandeep. Um, uh, my name is Nanda Kumar, and uh, I take care of all this product development here. Uh, in addition to Data Archiva, uh, there's two more products also we have, it's File Pro and Mancrypt. So I handle the entire uh, product development here on the team here. So that's a quick uh, intro on me. All right. Thank you, Nanda. So folks, like I had mentioned, I work closely with a lot of people who have their businesses on uh, Salesforce platform. While data is an asset which grows exponentially, Limited data storage space, heavy storage costs are still one of the complex challenges in Salesforce ecosystem. I have seen it, it all happening with a lot of Salesforce users and I'm glad we built Data Archiver for such scenarios. In this webinar, we will show you how Data Archiver became so popular in a span of just over a year and is now the first choice data archiving solution for many Salesforce users. Just before we get started about the incredible features Data Archiver has, let's see some of the cutting edges of Data Archiver. Data Archiver is 100% native data archiving solution, which means all your data is within Salesforce platform and is tightly held. Data Archiver is Gartner led, thus serving many business leaders turn to Data Archiver for their archival needs. And the last cutting edge is that Data Archiver is US government cloud ready. So if your org is on GovCloud, then get yourself Data Archiver to manage your data more effectively and above all, efficiently. Now let's get a few thoughts on some of the incredible features Data Archiver is packed with. The first one is 100% native storage. So Nanda, could you please tell us, our audience, what this means? So basically, you know, uh, uh, the entire storage is you know, within the Salesforce ecosystem, which means uh, your data does not leave outside the Salesforce. And this is some of the need, uh, security point of view. Uh, some of our customers, precisely, they were looking for uh, data not going outside the Salesforce. And that's where uh, Data Archive exactly fits in. And, uh, uh, from a security point of view, so since your data does not move out, uh, it's within your you know, sales force, and we use uh, big objects uh, internally. And uh, I'm not sure whether how many of you know uh, the, the 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 pricing uh, of uh, big objects is relatively less compared to your uh, sales force uh, object pricing, and that's where we make use of. And the uh, entire thing is stored within the big object and it naturally becomes 100% you know, native. Thank you, Nanda, uh, for the answer. I have a question on behalf of the audience. Uh, the thing is, the question is, since we are archiving data from data storage to big object storage, which is again in the same platform, can we see any improved application performance? Oh yeah. So since you know, like um, the data gets offloaded uh, from the your uh, live data to the secondary storage, that is uh, big objects. Uh, 
uh, all your queries, you know, any of your reports, everything, you know, gets a little bit optimized because uh, it doesn't have to deal with uh, a large amount of data. Uh, that way, naturally, your application performance is, you know, as an outcome, it's going to get improved. Uh, and what we have seen with our customers as well, and when they have, you know, in terms of uh, 600, 700 gigabytes of data, the moment you offload, uh, you know, the performance naturally gets uh, improved. Great. Thank you for answering that, Nanda. Uh, I do have another question for you, uh, and that is about compliance. So how Data Archiver can help in addressing compliance? So the compliance is you know, a need across uh, different industry sectors. You know, let's say if it's medical or if it is uh, any other government sectors or any other uh, uh, the tourism industry. It depends on different industries. So they all have a different uh, requirement on the compliance. Uh, now that you know, with the Archiva, you basically archive all your data into the secondary storage, and it stays uh, for a longer period of time, the, the longer that you want it. So now, now you can run any of your clients' uh, related uh, you know, queries against this data, and also you can also retain this data depending on the, depending on the retention policy. So from compliance point of view, you know the, uh, you can run any compliance queries against uh, the data. In addition, we also have two more features uh, wherein we also uh, archive uh, all your system audits and also the field tracking. So together with this, all these three, uh, all your compliance needs can be met. Great. Uh, thank you so much. I think that cleared. Uh, confusion I had. So thank you so much for doing that and answering it. Um, let's get to the other feature of Data Archive Ananda, uh, which is Schedule and Forget. Now, this one sounds admin friendly. Uh, what do you have to say about it? So, so when we designed you know, Data Archive, this was one of the key considerations. Uh, what it means is uh, uh, for the admin, once it's configured, you know, it should be like a, a maintenance free, meaning uh, once it's configured, it should you know, automatically keep happening on the background without uh, much uh, no, admin intervention. So let me show you the, the screen. I'll just do a screen share. Yeah. Uh, just a moment, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, so uh, before I get there, you know, once you install Data Archiver, this is what you're going to look at. It has a very stunning view. And uh, let me go to uh, the object configuration. It's, it's pretty easy here. So all you need is, you know, you click on a new uh, and then uh, uh, configure the object. For instance, uh, let me take you here. So, so once you click on new object, you know, uh, in this case, I have selected asset as an object, and automatically it lists all the fields that's available, uh, pre-selected with uh, the index, and you still have a choice to uh, select a different index. And then, uh, just a moment, let me open uh, one of the existing object, and I will show you how easy it is to schedule and configure. So, so once you configure the object, the next thing is uh, you can schedule on a hourly, daily, a weekly, or a monthly basis. And uh, on even in weekly, you can also select uh, which uh, day of the week, a monthly again, which day of the month. And then you can also select the time when you want it, which preferred time. And then you can put your uh, filter criteria on the policy on the basis you would like to archive. Uh, typical use cases is you know, like uh, you want to archive all unused data, let's say three year older, you can put it any circle syntax here. And you know, those records are the candidates for archiving. So once set, you, know, you have a filter criteria and then a schedule, and it's all set, you know, that's all you need to do. And the system automatically takes care of archiving your data for a period of time. And this also takes care of complete relationship. Uh, 
Wow, this surely is the best admin friendly tool. The dashboards and screens look really stunning. So thank you so much, Nanda, for showing us uh, some of the screens. The next feature is encryption at rest. So what does this mean to your data? Yeah, so uh, as many of you know, no, the shield, uh, so the Salesforce shield you know, takes care of uh, all your data encryption at rest. Uh, and the question naturally comes when uh, this data gets archived, uh, what happens to those data? You know, from a business point of view, you may be looking uh, for uh, encryption at rest. And that is where we introduce the feature called uh, encryption at rest. So you can uh, encrypt any of the fields that you know of the objects uh, so basically after archiving the, the the data gets encrypted and you can also finally control you know, whether you wanted to show this uh, data uh, for the people some people who over wants to access this you know it can also decrypt and show it uh, for some of them who do not want to have access you can also prevent this from getting viewed uh, that's a quick uh, Feature from starting. Great. Um, thank you for answering that. Um, I do have another question, uh, and this is from the audience uh, this time. Uh, while this all looks achievable, how much maintenance is required for data archiving? Yeah, uh, absolutely. No, uh, this uh, the whole intention of this product uh, right from the day when we designed. Uh, we wanted to keep as less you know maintenance or free from admin. One time setup, it does it, configures, thereafter, you know, the, the maintenance is pretty much less. It doesn't have to do anything. And if at all, if there is something fails during this process, let's say the archiving fail, uh, there's a good notification email sent to the admin you know, with all the details. And that's where you know, the admin can go and look what really failed and fix the problems. Uh, and that way, it's, it's just a maintenance free occasion, in other words. So it's not going to cost on uh, the customer's uh, budget, which is really good to know. Uh, otherwise, frequent maintenance do cost a lot. Thank you so much for uh, giving us that clarity. Um, and uh, when you speak about this, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, complex data relationships, auto metadata sync, data purging? I know Data Archive uh, supports complex data relationships. Uh, it has uh, auto metadata sync and data purging options but what do they really mean to data so this is one of the key functionality i mean uh, today you see uh, data is not just data it has a uh, no complex relationship uh, from one object to another object so the question is uh, when we rk you know what happens to this relationship the answer is uh, uh, the entire relationship is retained you know, during archive. So when, whenever we archive any records, we take care of all the child records and also uh, to any level of you know, child levels. So the entire hierarchy is you know, taken uh, to considered during archiving. And uh, that's one of the key functionality of this whole this product. You know. uh, and second thing, you know, you asked about uh, the metadata sync. So, uh, since I said you know this product is uh, you know, free from the maintenance, so for admin it's just you know configure and forget. So if there is any metadata change, uh, the object uh, let's say a new field gets added or any data type gets changed, uh, data archive automatically detects this, fixes this on the big object, then starts archiving it. So under the hood everything goes you know, automatically. So admin doesn't have to intervene even if there is any schema change. And the third thing is the data purging. Uh, this is also a, a compliance need uh, depending on the different industries. For instance, medical industry has to keep the data, let's say, for 10 years or 15 years. And uh, different other industries have different requirements. You can also specify this your uh, you know, the data retention policy that we call it as a purging. So after that period of time, the data automatically gets removed or deleted from the archive storage. Uh, that's another uh, uh, functionality to support both compliance and the retention policy in general. Thank you for explaining that, uh, Nanda. 
we have another quick question from the audience and uh, and this is a very interesting one um, if i install data archiver what will happen to my already archived data so since you know it's a native and uh, uh, the archive data resides in the big object uh, in case if, uh, if anybody doesn't want to use data archiver this is just an, uh, <coughs> an uh, uh, a plan how would you move forward without data archiver so the data remains in big gods and uh, along with the relationship and the object hierarchy so you can use any of the tools uh, available uh, from the sales force or you can also build your own tool and it's very much queryable meaning you can pull that data uh, from the big object or you can also retain as it is in the big object for a longer period of time and the uh, other option is you can pull that data to the any other uh, storage you can do any kind of analytics so it's actually completely you know, available for the customer to use it the way they want brilliant uh, so in other words, Nanda, my data is is still within the uh, Salesforce platform and it is not lost. Is that right? That's very true. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, audience, for the wonderful questions. Please keep them coming. Uh, and Nanda, now that we talked about the core functionalities of Data Archiver, could you also explain us a little on the additional features which give a really nice cutting edge to Data Archiver? The bunch of features. <coughs> One is uh, uh, bulk archive and restore. Uh, through schedule, you can always uh, do a bulk uh, uh, records archive that takes care of all the child and everything, complete level, different levels. Uh, if your business needs, you know, you want to bring in the data back to your uh, life, you can also do that. You can restore your data. That data archive takes care of restoring your data back to the live data, along with all the child relationship. That's one <coughs> good feature. You know. And uh, second thing is uh, integration. <coughs> so how you can archive. Uh, one is schedule, which I already talked about. The other way is you can also integrate with uh, process builder. Uh, suppose, you know, uh, let's say an example. Let's say you have a case object, and you wanted to archive whenever case gets closed, irrespective of the date. You can you can hook that with the process builder. So the moment the state uh, gets closed, uh, archive will automatically pick that and you know, archive it. So you can put any kind of complex uh, you know, criteria in the process builder and then you know, move that to the uh, archive or second storage. In addition, you can also do manual also. So the various ways you can archive your data. And uh, the good part is uh, the data integrity. Uh, from a traditional archiving point of view, and you know, now things have changed a lot. So present uh, requirements are like you know when the data gets archived, how do you pull that data back and view? So let me share my screen and I will show you. So uh, let me just turn on it. Just sharing my screen. Yeah, I hope you are. So now I have an account record. You can see this account record. And uh, some of the child case records are already archived. And you can see, the moment I go into account record, the parent one, and all the child record which is already archived directly gets pulled from the hard storage and gets rendered here. The good part is uh, for the end user, uh, the data still you know, uh, is, comes from the secondary storage. But to him, it sounds like all the data is coming from the sales primary storage. So this is one of the key functionality many of our customers like, uh, primarily because uh, even after get data getting archived, uh, you don't need to really pull that data to restore or you, are, you, you don't need to really query that directly. The relationship between the live data and the archive data is still intact. And you can always drill down from the parent record, drill down to child, anything. For example, in this case, you have a case which is, comes from the archive, and I when I click on that, I still go here and you know, get the case object. And the case has got a bunch of child uh, records, for example, if you have comment and you have an attachment. So, entire thing is you, know, you can build to any level. 
So this is one of the good features uh, that many of our customer like. So yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, and, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, so these were some of the incredible features of Data Archiver. And Nanda, uh, one of our audience wants to know if we can archive data external to Salesforce and still enjoy all the features we talked about. Now, while I ask you to explain this question, let me uh, our audience about Data Archiver. Data Archiver is one of the brilliant features in uh, uh, Data Connectiva is a brilliant feature in Data Archiver that helps uh, you connect your Salesforce to an external storage and have your data archived externally. So Nanda, can you explain us a little more about this? Yeah. So, I mean, as I was, uh, the, the very first title you might have seen, you know, we've been, been talking about uh, the nativeness, uh, the data archive being native. Uh, of course, it is completely native, but at the same time, you know, uh, there were some customers who were asking for, you know, if they can store data outside Salesforce, and that's where uh, we built uh, an add-on connector to this. Uh, we call it as a data connectiva. It's a connector, and through which uh, uh, data archiva can push all your data instead of big object. It can actually go into any of your external cloud providers. So we some variety of that, you know, for example, AWS, Azure, Heroku, Google, or in case if you want your own on-premise cloud, you can still do that. And in that, uh, the multiple databases, relational databases we support, for instance, uh, Redshift, uh, MSSQL, Postgres, Oracle, MySQL, and uh, any other relational databases will work on this. So to answer your question, yes, you know, uh, Customers has got choice. You know, if they want to use native, they can always go to big objects. They're fine to you know, move data outside uh, Salesforce. Uh, we still have a connector which can take the data outside and archive. However, the entire uh, front end, the UI, whatever you've seen, all remains you know, the same for both. Uh, so that way, there is no change in uh, the user experience. Right. Uh Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Nanda, for all your well thought explanations. I bet this is why enterprises are opting for their data, data archiver, uh, data archiving needs. Uh, and some of the organizations that got immensely benefited are Connecticut State Department of Labor from the US, Allied Investment Group from Australia, and iFood from Brazil, and many more such customers. So I think with that, on, on that note, let's move on uh, real quick. And it's time for some questions. And I do see we have a couple of questions from that. Um, uh, keeping time in mind, uh, I, I'm going to only part the session for just two questions. The rest of them, we can still answer them uh, on a separate note. The first question is, I'm already using Shield. Will it have any impact? That's the question for you. Partly mentioned earlier also, uh, if you're using Shield you know, uh, and uh, you also want to use uh, Data Archiva, uh, the data gets moved from the Salesforce uh, objects to the secondary big object uh, or it can be even outside. Uh, data Archiva supports encryption at rest, so, so both of these are pretty independent. You know, um, uh, nothing should interfere with one another, so that way. Uh, uh, Shield should not have any impact, neither uh, the encryption that we support. So both works in a different data source, so I think it's, uh, it works in both cases. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And I hope the answer helps uh, our audience uh, you know, to the question they had. So uh, I just made a final call out for two questions, and we have uh, the last question for uh, you know today. And that is, when you restore any record, Will the IDs be the same? No, that's a wonderful question. I think even I didn't get that one. So could you help us answer that? Yeah, sure. So uh, as you know, whenever an archive happens, basically we delete the record and then move that to the secondary storage. And now that you want that record back, so which means it just creates a new record altogether. Obviously, the ID is not retained. So it creates a new ID. So now you question, you know, like, uh, 
what will happen to all your you, know, if you have to refer with the old ids so none of the data data is lost so all the data old id for example old id created date modified date or any of the field information read only fields those data is retained completely and uh, it's stored in the form of a json so at any point of time you can correlate that data and query it back as well and uh, during restore we also take care of all the child object relationship completely so that way for the end user it is it is more like a seamless you know, operation uh, it is more of internal how we map this id and you know then uh, create a new one and associate so all the uh, bigger complexities are all taken care by data archive under the hood thank you so much nanda uh, and that was the last of the questions and that's all i have for you right now uh thank you so much for your participation and that uh, appreciate it and this ladies and gentlemen concludes today's webinar thank you for joining us today it was uh, wonderful to host you if you are on social media so are we follow us on twitter facebook youtube and linkedin have a great time ahead and talk to you soon goodbye thanks and good thanks for all the audience and uh, it was a pleasure you know, talking about this uh, topic hopefully we'll get more topics down the line thanks everyone for joining us